Amen. Y'all know we're all tested. Amen. Why are we Amen. tested? Not for us to go down, but for us to come up. Amen. That's how God does us. God doesn't tempt us, neither do we tempt him, but he will test us. He will show us that with him we're capable of all things. What the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I'm excited Amen. about this season that God is He's dealing with me on some things about me and some things about some of the other folks in the ministry. And uh, I'm just wanting to get to a small, still place and just listen to God attentively and make sure that I'm moving in a way that I believe he's calling for us to move. Amen. And it's not that I don't know. I just want to reinforce and reconfirm some things. And we thank the Lord. Our God is good. So good to see a lot of folks been on trips. Like I said, sister here been on trips. Sister here been on the trip. And they're not doing cartwheels. I ain't been on no trip, mother. Some people say I am a trip, but we think that's something different. We thank the Lord. But I thank, I thank God uh, that you all were able to get away. I'm, I'm joking, of course. It's good to get away, amen? Amen. We used to sing this song. In fact, Mother Melton, husband used to uh, lead the song. You ought to, I think, you ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You ought to take the Lord with you. Everywhere you go, you ought to take the Lord with you. Everywhere you go. Now y'all going to have to help me. In the streets, in your home, highway, byway. <laughs> we sing those old songs. It was a good song. Because you could remember the words back then, but I ain't singing them. Why are you looking at me? Because I forgot the words, baby. <laughs> She's like, you don't even know the words. <laughs> She's looking at me like, what is he doing? We thank the Lord. We thank God. But we thank God for you on this morning. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Nahum. Nahum. One of the minor prophets in the Bible. Chapter 1. going to start at verse 1. You all can stand and referencing God's word. The book of Nahum is around the chapter, the books of the other minor chapters. Uh, 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 prophets, I mean. Chapter 1. We're going to start reading at the first verse. The burden of Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum. The Elko Shite. God is jealous, and the Lord, the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord had his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and dry up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth and Carmel and the flowers of Lebanon languish. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good. A strong hold in the day of trouble. Remember, the Lord is good. Look at somebody say, the Lord is good. Lord is good. Even in your trouble, the Lord is good. And he knoweth that them that trust in him. He knows when you trust him. Amen. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter and end of the place thereof. 
and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What's the next word there? What is it? What shall? Uh, what do? Somebody read that for me. What do ye imagine against the Lord? Keep reading. He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. He'll pursue who? Who will he pursue? His enemies. His enemies should be our enemies. Listen to this. For a while they be folded together as thorns, and while they are drunken, as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counsel. Thus said the Lord, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be what? Cut down. down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. In other words, God said, I've allowed you to be afflicted by what you're going through. You won't have to face this enemy no more. Some of us keep allowing the enemy to come back and deal with the same old things God delivered you out of. I'm talking to somebody this morning. For now will I break his yoke from off thee and will burst thy bonds in sunder. In other words, God said, I will free you. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art bound. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated. The wicked shall be what? Anybody ever cut meat up and you chop it? Well, sometimes we still deal with dead issues that haunt us and that will attack us, but See, just put in mind that that enemy, just like that meat, is dead to you. Yeah. And just like the meat we prepare, we chop it up in portions and we devour it. That's what God is saying. This enemy is gone. You don't have to worry about this enemy no more. How many of y'all are getting tired of the enemy messing with you and your family? If you're not, you might be on his side. I'm tired of God's people being messed with. I'm tired of being messed with with the enemy. And God is saying, what have I told you in my word? Resist them and he'll flee. Amen. Do what I've called you to do. See, Paul took hold to this because Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Paul was jailed. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was chased and then beheaded. But you know what? Paul is going to be standing before the Lord. Here, well done. That is what we need to focus on. It's not focus on what the enemy is trying to afflict us with, not what the enemy is doing to us, not what the enemy did last week, not what the enemy did years ago in your life, not what the enemy did to your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, not to your cousin, but what is God doing for you right now? We're still in the land of the living. Many of us thought we were going to die years ago, but look at God. He has given you favor of life. Amen. He has given me favor of life. I'm still here to do something special. I don't care what you say. I don't care what my bank account looks like. I don't care what kind of house I'm living in. I don't care what kind of car I'm driving. God got something for me. Amen. I heard you pray purpose. Our purpose is to please God. Amen. That's our purpose. Stop reading all these books on my purpose, this and purpose, that and purpose. Our purpose is to fulfill the will of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to please God, guess what? Hallelujah. God will begin to cut the enemy completely off. 
because he knows you're on a mission that can't be impeded, can, can't be stopped, can't be delayed because you're going out with these good tidings, good wills, and, and talking about who can save them, who can help them. Talking about the good news of the gospel. That's when God will begin to move in your life. Let me tell you something. When we put God first, and that's what God is dealing with me. Son, are you putting me first? Over everything, are you putting me first? Are we putting God first? So the enemy gets cut off. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Don't, worry. don't worry. The enemy's going to get cut off. He ain't going to be messing with you and your family no more. You know why? Because as he is messing with you, guess what? You got tunnel vision because you know the Lord is leading you. You know the Lord is guiding you. You know the Lord is for you. Greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're going to keep moving. Yeah, you're going to have some good days. Yeah, you're going to have some bad days. But I won't complain. Because I know who's on my side. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know God is for me. That's more than the world against me. But some of us get lulled into the things of this world. We latch on to the things of this world. We latch on because we got a little money today. We, oh my God, a little money. But with God, I got an abundance. Overflow. Press down, shake it together, run it over. I'm talking about what they talk about, stupid money. Stupid blessings. That's what I want. Not not the money. I'm talking about things I don't have to worry about. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Money should be your furthest worry. Or my furthest worry. You know what I'm more concerned about? Is pleasing God. Mm -hmm. How close am I to pleasing God? How close am I doing the will of God? How close am I doing what? If I do what God is calling for me to do, guess what? He said, I'll add all things unto That's you. Right. That's right. He said it. I'll add all things unto you. Sometimes, have you ever looked in the refrigerator? Thank God. I go back years ago. Y'all heard me talk about this. Look in the refrigerator and couldn't even catch a cold, much less any food. Nothing in the refrigerator. You, you ever had a refrigerator that every time you look, look around, you got to defrost it? Why? Ain't no food in it. Anybody ever been there? I'm not joking. A grease can in there. <laughs> From stuff you cooked two, three weeks ago. See, some of y'all are too blessed, too blessed. They don't understand it. You want to eat the bologna in there, but look how the funny you got fuzz on. You got to grow a beard. <laughs> y'all laughing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some of us every day, we can eat steak if we want to. We can eat crab meat if we want to. Every day. But God has cut off the enemy from your life. That's why we're here. I look at the book here where the enemy, God, God will do this too to chastise us. Move out of the way and let the enemy have his way. He ain't going to let the enemy kill you. But man, that whooping, everybody, anybody ever got a real whooping from your mama or daddy? Daddy didn't whoop us too much, but grandmama and mama had a field day. Not field day, F-I-E-L-D, F-E-E-L. Because after they whooped you, you didn't feel too good. Because they, they would chastise you. You know, you know you, you shouldn't be doing that. I don't want to have to beat you, but why did you? <laughs> you know I love you. What? <laughs> see, uh, see, some of the younger people in here haven't been gotten one of those whoopings that I'm talking about. Sometimes God will whoop you to the place that you like God. I thought you were a loving God. He said, I am. I chasten those I love. <laughs> we got to get into the word. Because he's allowing you and I to go through things. And we're not dying in things. God is waiting for some of us to just take that serious step towards him. He, he, he says, I, I hear your mouth talking, but your heart is far from me. Some people are, oh, God bless you, God this and God that. But have no relationship. They just know church. Oh, okay, I'm going to stop. 
They just know church protocol. Hallelujah. Raising holy hands. A sinner man or woman can come into the church and mimic everything that we do in worship. But they can't worship. Did y'all hear me? Those who worship him have to worship him in what? Spirit and truth. The enemy is cut off because we have a relationship with God. And God ain't going to play with the enemy. But we do. We let them take up our time. Mess up our relationships. Mess up our money. Mess up our homes. Mess up everything that God has given unto us. Everything belongs to God. It says that the earth is whose? The Lord's. And the fullness there of meaning everything in the realm of this world belongs to God. He created everything. He created everything. So we got to remember, if we trust God, if we stay with God, listen, God will not withhold any good thing from you and I. See, Nahum was one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And in the word of God was a significant message. See, minor didn't mean that they didn't have nothing to say. They just said a little bit. But what they said was significant. So you had major prophet, minor prophet, it don't make them any less to God. Or to us when we read. His name means to comfort or consolation, which was timely for his ministry to Judah. Nahum, this book, was an oracle against Nineveh. Y'all remember Nineveh when Jonah dealt with Nineveh and he had to go and preach the word to turn them away from their sin? Guess what? Years later, Nineveh was destroyed because of their sin. So it's not up to us to, to, to focus on whether a person saved or not. If you preach the word, if you spoke the word, if you taught the word, if you given them the right hand of salvation, if you talked to them about the goodness of Jesus Christ, it ain't on you no more. But we should be discipling people who come into the church fold. I, I, listen, God is a righteous God and, and just God. And he's slow to anger. God gives us a chance to come around. God gives us a chance to get it right. But we believe God's slowness to anger is our past passageway to continue in sin. See, God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach a message of repentance. They repented and God withheld the judgment uh, at that time. Nineveh fell back into its wicked ways and treacherous ways and oppressing other nations, and especially God's people. See, the enemy, he will not stop trying to attack God's people. But the way we respond is the way we, we have to understand that God has already cut the enemy off. When we're saved, sanctified, listen, saved, sanctified. Sanctified means set apart from the world. We're not still doing the worldly things. That's how he cuts the enemy off. We're not continuing in sin. We are doing what God is calling for us to do. We're not cut off from the blessings of God. Remember the, the prodigal son? He left his daddy's home and took what he thought was his. But what he didn't realize when he was in his daddy's home, he had all the blessings that would never stop. But as soon as he cut off and took it away, thinking he knew how to best use what his daddy gave him, that's when he had problems. Find himself down eating hus, mm -hmm. The hus that pigs eat. Mm -hmm. That's how we do. We get away from God because now, guess what? We, hey, look. I, look, my money's right. I got a new car. Man, all things, man, things are clicking, man, man. Man, I'm telling you, man. I'm balling now. Did they say balling still? <laughs> I don't know what the phrase is now. <laughs> Did it say balling? Y'all have uh, Yeah, I'm balling. You know, we say I'm balling, but. <laughs> say it again. You in your bag. That's a new one. Anyway, you think you got it going on. You know what I said. Two hot dogs and 
bag of chips and a soda. You got the full package. You know you got things going right. So you separate yourself from the things of God because you got it going on. I give all the glory to God. Whatever is going good in my life, I give him all the glory. I'm not taking away none of God's glory. You know why? As soon as we do, we go against the word of God because he said, I don't share my glory with anybody. Then he asked somebody, where were you when I uh, put all this in place? Where were you? Where were you? God is asking for us to be separate from the world so he can cut the enemy off from your blessings. Amen. He's going to cut the enemy off. But see, this message that the people of God, the children of God should announce to the enemy that if God be for you, can't nobody be against you. Amen. Nobody. The enemy is coming after you every day and God is ready for him, whether you are not. He says, seen or unseen danger, that he will protect you. He will protect you under his mighty wings. God is able. Trust him. He is cutting the enemy off from messing with your children, messing with your family, messing with your finances, messing with you on the job, messing with your husband, messing with your wife, messing with your church, messing with your neighborhood, messing with your first lady, messing with your pastor, messing with the deacon, messing with, messing with every lay member. God is cutting the enemy off. The enemy better get ready, hallelujah, because one day... He won't be able to mess with this no more because God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So we better get ready because the enemy is going to be cut off and he's going to be sent to the abyss. I'm so glad about it. That's why many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God will deliver us. Somebody needs to stand and say thank God for delivering us. Stop worrying about what man can do to you. Worry about the one who can take down body, soul, and spirit. Worry about the one, my God, if we don't line up, one day, see, there's everlasting for everybody. And we can choose right now which way we're going to go. We're going to be raptured up with God, or we're going to have an everlasting hell. See, the great day of the Lord won't be great for everybody. It's going to be horrible for some. It's going to be great for some. Uh, my God, for those who've been living right, uh, for those who've been calling on the name of Jesus, uh, when he come back, he said, I'm going to rapture up the church out of this mess. Uh, this world in a me is a mess. Don't you worry about global, what do they call it? The ice, the glacier, what is it called? Global warming. You got to worry about the heat of hell. That will burn forever and no quenching the burning. Anybody ever been burnt with a hot iron? Hell ain't nothing like it. Have you ever burned your hand on a hot stove? Hell ain't like that. Have you ever burned yourself with a sparkler? Yeah, I, I, I used to get burned with sparkler. That's why I came back. It's nothing like that. Because that was temporary and you healed from it. If you meet hell's doors and you go to hell, there ain't no quenching. Pain forever, eternally. My God, every time I think about it. Every time I think about it. My God. I just thank God for pulling me out of darkness and cutting the enemy off. Hallelujah. And in some texts it said, this enemy you won't see again. Some of us fight all kinds of different enemies, but we know that it comes from the pit of hell. And I say stand today on God's word, that God is cutting off the enemy in your life. So begin to serve God with everything you have in you. Begin to serve God with every inch of your life. Begin to serve God like today is your last day. Begin to serve God because the enemy, look at somebody say the enemy is cut off. Now get the Lord of praise in the house. I'm happy about it. You know why I'm happy about it? Because I got many loved ones that need to hear that the enemy is utterly cut off. Wait, what, what do you mean I'm going through sickness? That's okay. If you're with the Lord, he is with you. And I know him as a great physician. He's a healer. Because the word says, by his stripes, we're healed. Some say, oh my God, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm running out of this. And I'm running out of that. I heard in the word that he is Jehovah Jireh. Our great provider will never run out if we're in the Lord's care. In fact, there's text that said, I won't allow anybody to pluck you out of my hand. But some of us do this to God. God, let me out. And we go away. And we're out of the safety of his covenant. The relationship we have with him. Is there anybody here today want to be in with the Lord and have the enemy cut off? Cut off from everything that God is calling you to aspire to. Anybody that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, come now. If you don't know him, come now. Come now. Hallelujah. Those who don't know him, we thank God. We thank God. Is there anyone that just needs a blessing from the Lord in prayer at this time? I want you to come at this time. Anyone looking for a church home, come at this time. And we'll pray with you and pray for you. The Lord is leading you to be here. We thank the Lord. Let us Anybody need prayer for anything? Hallelujah. 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 All is well. Remember, the enemy is cut off. Just touch yourself right now. Touch yourself right now and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. By God. By God. The enemy, the enemy can, no longer can no longer have his way. Have his way. In my life. In my life. Because he is utterly. He is utterly cut off. Cut off. Give him some praise Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I'm so glad about it. I'm telling you some things are about to change in your life if we just trust on God and in God and do what he's calling for you to do in this day, these last and evil days. I'm telling you, stop playing church. If you're playing church, get real with God. Give your time to the ministry right now. I'm talking about kingdom work. We got many, we have been out on outreach as time was to come together and go out. Hallelujah. We're going to set up a protocol that the ministry team can go out not just on third Saturday. But I don't want people going out by themselves. Because that's not wise. If you read the Bible, they didn't go out by themselves. At least two. We thank the Lord. But we're going to talk about this more. Outreach is needed. People are losing their minds. They're losing their minds. And I'm not talking about outside the church, sometimes in the church. That's because we're not realizing that this spirit that's trying to come upon some people is from the devil. There's a spirit of divination that we have to deal with. A spirit of haughtiness we have to deal with. It's so many spirits that try to come up against God's people and God. People are losing it. I keep hearing about people dealing with mental things. And this world, if, if, if listen, this world is enmity to God, meaning the enemy of God. So the things that come up against us is trying to pull us and gravitate us more to the world than to God. The enemy is tricking people all the time to not trust God and stand on his word. Get into your word so the word will get into you. David told us, this word have I hid in my heart so I would not sin against God. We got to understand what God's calling for. We got to understand it. God needs more tenors in that in the place. He needs more men. Yeah. He needs more men in the house of God. Why? Because he made us the leaders over the woman. I know some women don't like to hit us. That's in the word of God. And women are looking for the man to love her. I'm talking about unconditionally like Christ. Who gave what? His life for the church. 
So men, it's time for men to step up and step out on the things of God. Step up. Stand on the word of God and then step out and do what God is calling. We have, guess what? We have our churches packed with more children. Young people leaving the church. What is that about? That's nothing but the trick of the enemy. Wants to kill them. He'll go after the weaker vessel. But he's cut off because we know better. If you're not witnessing to people right now and telling them about the goodness of the Lord, you need to check yourself. I'm not going to beat you up on that. But God is so good, why don't you tell somebody? Are you telling anybody? Or are you still taking a sip with them? Okay, I'm going to keep this thing real. You're telling them about them, but you're still gambling and playing cards with them and all kinds of ungodly things. And you're afraid to tell them about it because you haven't been delivered. Y'all don't like me. But guess what? You got to love them if you're a child of God. I'm speaking the truth. Everybody want to say God this and God that, but are we living according to his word? And I'm going to say some of us are and some of us not. It's not a right or wrong thing. We have to understand how grace abounds where he can cut the enemy off from slowing you down. God got something for you, but he can't release it until we receive the full hand of his salvation, understanding what the salvation means. We're saved for times such as this, that we shall be with him forever. Anybody, I'm going to call, all to call again, even Facebook. If you need the Lord in your life, you need to reach out to us or get with a Bible believing, Bible living, Bible teaching, Bible preaching church and make that your place of worship and fellowship and learning and perfecting the things of the ministry. Before we sign off, can we give the Lord a praise one more time? Can we really praise him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll see everybody 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday for prayer and 7.30 for Bible study on Zoom and Facebook. One day we're going to be back in the church for live Bible study, for live prayer, and for live Sunday school. One day, one day, we will. So be ready. Get your hearts prepared for that. I believe God is going to move this thing out of here. And I'm not going to put no time on it because it's only in God's time that we do. Amen. We thank the Lord. Let us prepare to dismiss. Let us stand. Don't let the enemy cut you off from God's blessing. You let the enemy be cut off from your blessings. I just want to see a show of hands real quick before we sign off here and release everyone. And don't raise your hand unless you really mean this. Don't raise your hand unless you mean it. Who feels blessed in here by the Lord? Well, praise God. Praise the Lord. And that means that guess what? You can and you will. I will. We all will do better. Forget about those things that are behind. What do we need to do? Press. Huh? Press. Huh? Press. Let's press. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, cutting off the enemy for us, Lord, that you have shown us, Lord, and uh, many examples, Lord, and where the enemy will always try to attack. You said he'll come steal, kill, and destroy, but you come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Lord, continue to bless us, Lord. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to feel, Lord, those things of the Lord that must be done uh, in our lives, Lord, and to help in the moving of your kingdom. Now, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for watching over us in the service, opening our ears, eyes, and understanding, Lord. Oh, God, we ask you to watch over your people until we meet again. May the grace of God 
and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The enemy is cut off. Uh -huh. Thank you.